I've had my greasy gamer mitts on a lot of premium and custom controllers. You know what really gets me stimulated down there in the gamer nether regions? A good set of rear buttons or paddles. Unfortunately, not all esports controllers are created equal, and there simply are some poor paddle designs on the market. Today, we're going to be stacking side by side, neck to neck, tip to tit, six of the most common, popular, and well praised in the gaming community rear paddle controllers for first person shooters. After getting hundreds of hours of stick time with these bad boys, I'm going to explain which ones are my favorite and which ones fall short and exactly why. Let's get it. The most important feature of any premium or custom controller, especially for esports or first person shooter use, is going to be the rear paddle slash button design. Some use paddles, some use buttons. I prefer a four button or paddle design as opposed to a two, because with a lot of these, you can actually detach or remove two of the paddles if you don't want, then run four in certain games. Now this video is strictly gonna focus on rear paddles and buttons. I'm not gonna touch on any other features, but one thing I do want to caveat or mention right up front is that the Wolverine Chroma over here, as well as any of the Razer controllers, such as the Wolverine Tournament and Ultimate are wired, as is the Power A Fusion Pro over here. Now, in my opinion, for PC use, that is not a big deal whatsoever because you're generally sitting at a desk where you can plug into the front of your tower. However, in a casual console environment, such as sitting back in bed in your bedroom or on a couch in a living room, having the convenience of not being tethered with a wire is fantastic, not to mention the whole argument of zero input delay or lag has become less and less of an issue over the last seven or eight years or so. As we're wireless connectivity, whether you're talking about the 2.4 gigahertz dedicated connection between an Xbox or the Bluetooth 5.0 that PlayStation 4 and 5 use have gotten so good to where input lag or delay is so unnoticeable it's milliseconds if that and unless you are a competitive esports athlete in which case if you're in a tournament you're, you're probably at a setup a rig a terminal plugged into whatever you're competing on for casual console use wireless is the way to go in my opinion getting that out of the way so these are wired but they do have four paddles so they are going to be included in this comparison here i'm going to try and keep this video short and concise and just jump right into it so i don't ramble or repeat myself or anything so starting out with hex's latest offering in the four paddle department for the xbox series you can tell that this is meant for the series because it does have that share button as well as the hybrid d-pad which is a wheel and a four point as well this does have swappable thumbsticks sad eh, we're not talking about that here today ergonomically it is very comfortable because this is exactly where you would like to naturally naturally rest your hands when you're holding the shell of an Xbox One or Series controller, and you do get a good resistance where you're not going to accidentally actuate these switches very often. They are clicky and tactile, despite the fact that they are not a mechanical switch. They do feel very good, and remapping them is super simple. You have this little flip lever, and you are able to quickly remap all four of them, probably in about 10 or 15 seconds which I really do like. I am a big fan of this, and this is gonna be ranked relatively high in my opinion. Now you cannot really remove these. You can pop off these little plastic covers, but there's still gonna be a little button underneath there like that. And the reason for that is you can actually buy this as a kit, which is awesome because if you don't wanna spend $250 on a premium controller and you don't mind tinkering a little bit, which you can do, I'm having a hell of a time getting this back on there. Now there technically is a way to deactivate these paddles if you remap all of them to the share button. That is more or less deactivating the paddles to where you can share it with a friend in couch co-op or a significant other that doesn't prefer rear paddles because they accidentally hit them or whatever. Uh, the Elite 2 has long running been one of my favorite paddle designs. It basically took what we had with the Elite 1 and made it substantially better by pushing these paddles closer to the rear shell, not to mention they are shaved down about 30% and they do require more resistance to hit them. And I am a big fan of this and the combination of the rubber grips with these nice metal metallic paddles feels very, very good. And I also do like the fact that they are completely removable and not just removable, but very quickly and easily because they're magnetized. So I do really like that a lot. And also there's a big aftermarket for this controller as well. Scuff makes aftermarket paddles for this, which I have reviewed on this channel. That video will be linked in the description below. And overall, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal design. Now the aim over here, I'm actually not too tremendous of a fan of, which is unfortunate because I really do like their PS5 DualSense controller. However, there is a couple of issues with this one. You can remove this by twisting this off. You can actually pop off two or even four of the paddles, which is cool. These do feel kind of flimsy and cheap, and also these bottom ones stick way too far out. They need to be shaved down a little bit in their next version or iteration. So hopefully if AIM's watching, uh, just shave these down a little bit because the thing is, when you pause your game and then you set this down on a table, check this out. It's actually resting on its paddles to where as soon as you set the controller down after pausing it, it's going to activate one of the paddles and then unpause your game and you're getting your titties slapped around. So not to mention the top two paddles do feel really clicky and tactile. However, the bottom two, 
are not the same mechanism and they do feel just a little bit sloppy and loose in my opinion. So this isn't one of my favorite paddle designs, especially because there are so many great competitors in the space. Now for the longest time, I bashed Scuff for having one of the worst paddle designs on the market. Ergonomically, it was incredibly uncomfortable. You could not cover all four of the paddles simultaneously unless you held it like this, which is not comfortable, especially for long gaming sessions. Not to mention, they were very, very flimsy. They were breaking for a lot of people. And unless you had a 3D printer, you had to actually buy a replacement on Amazon. And for a while, they didn't have replacements on Amazon. You would have to mail the whole controller into Scuff, which took like two to three weeks. And you had to pay out of pocket as Scuff or Corsair only has a six month warranty, which is very small. Now that did change here recently with the Impact and Impact Pro. This is the Pro version here. And I really am a big fan of this design here. Now, the only downside is you technically are covering all four of the buttons because your middle fingers rest in here and you can either pull inwards to activate these switches or expand outwards, straighten your finger. If you're trying to press multiple rear buttons at a time, maybe trying to slide and reload at the same time, maybe trying to jump and swap weapons, doing a pro gamer move, you know what I mean? You'd have to actually hold it like this. You can't hope for the best and hope that if you just pinch your finger in there that you're gonna hit both of the switches, but unless you got some really thick meat hammers or a bunch of bananas for fingers, you're probably not gonna be able to cleanly hit all four of the buttons or two or three of the buttons at a time. But I did completely play through Halo Infinite using this controller and it was incredibly comfortable and it just felt good. Overall, the rubber grips in combination with this new paddle design, or buttons I should say, is a great design. I think Scuff made a tremendous improvement. Next up in the wired side of the house, we have the Wolverine V2 Chroma, which is the latest addition to the lineup of Wolverine Xbox controllers. And this is an interesting one for me. These buttons do not remove, but they are in a position to where if you just hold it normally, they're up and out of the way until you do need them, then you extend your fingers out. But this really isn't that comfortable, especially for long gaming sessions. Now you could hold it like that and then just slide your fingers up and down, but that's not very comfortable. And also these feel kind of cheap and chintzy. The whatever plastic they used here, it just feels kind of cheap and chintzy when you're depressing them. I'm not depressed using them, but you know, it, when you're depressing them, it doesn't feel great. Also, it's kind of slick. I wish they used some kind of a rubberized coating or something. I'm sure you could stick on a little aftermarket pad or something, but I'm just not a huge fan. I just, it's not very ergonomic. The fact they can't be removed isn't great. I will say it is nice that they do have two additional buttons up here and these are tactile, but why didn't they go with a mechanical switch like their face buttons and D-pad for the paddles. They just went with this real sloppy, cheap feeling plastic. I just don't understand that. I guess to cut costs. Next up, bringing up the rear, the tuchus, the rump of this competition here. It is no competition holding this sack of crap here. The Power A Fusion Pro V2 or version two over here, horrendous. I absolutely hate this paddle design. You can remove them magnetically like that, which is cool. Gotta be smart enough to get them back in though. Uh, but you can't actually remove the entire module like that. Then they do have a back plate that covers up this little rear section here but I am not a fan of these whatsoever. For one, they stick way too far off the rear shell and they just feel sharp and jagged against your fingertip and they they feel super chintzy. Look how much look how much wobble or wiggle is in here. This, this feels like this paddle design was an afterthought that was just tacked onto this controller. It does not feel like during the R&D phase, they built the controller around the paddle design. It feels like the paddles were just slapped on as a little tack on bolt on. Now, this is the cheapest controller here by far at 80 US dollars and uh, you kind of get what you pay for, unfortunately. They feel so sloppy and mushy and just, uh, for lack of a better word, gross, I would say. So I now have these organized in order from best to worst, in my opinion. The best would be the Elite Series 2. It took the paddles that were already pretty good on the Elite 1 and made them that much better. Plus the fact that this is a licensed Microsoft controller, so it just instantly syncs up with your Xbox. You can control the settings and keybinds from the actual Xbox uh, interface or your operating system. You don't have to install a third-party app like you do with the Razer. And the fact that they are magnetized and removable and they are up against the rear shell, they just feel very, very good. And a lot of times when I'm playing controller on PC, it will be an Elite 2 that I do grab. Now, there are quality control issues with the Elite 1. The Elite 2 did fix a lot of these QC issues, especially with the recent batch that has been going out. Um, I've been playing heavily with this one for about four months now, four or five months, and I've had no issues, but also it's almost luck of the draw. It's almost silicon lottery that you'll get one that isn't um, a busted piece of crap. So in my opinion, the Elite 2 has a very solid paddle design. Next up would be the Hex Gaming Controller over here. I think this just feels so, these feel so tactile and clicky and just comfortable to hold. And it really is a joy to use these paddles and it just ergonomically feels 
fantastic. These are linked in the description below and I do have exclusive discount codes for my viewership here, my audience for the Hex Gaming as well as the AIM controller. I really do like how ergonomic and comfortable the scuff paddle design is, but because you cannot effectively cover all four of the paddles because you're using one finger, I'm not flipping you guys off, sorry about that. You're using one finger to cover two different buttons. You can't technically have full coverage and control simultaneously, I'm throwing out a lot of big words there, Kevin, of the back paddles. But overall, I, I, I am a big fan of this. And the whole presentation and package on this is just muy caliente. Now the aim controller over here, this would actually probably be up here above the scuff if they were to just shave down these rear paddles and put a little bit more resistance into that mechanism for the bottom paddles there. Oh, and also, I almost forgot this, getting batteries in and out of this thing, as this does still use disposable batteries or you can get a recharge pack, getting batteries in and out of here, getting the tray off is a bitch and a half. It is incredibly inconvenient. So that is not great. And like I said, you pause your game and you set this thing down on the table and it just, it's sitting on the rear paddles. Uh, shave these down a little bit, AIM, please. Now these aren't down here because they are wired. Granted, I have an affinity for wireless controllers, but these are here because these paddles aren't great. Technically these are buttons, but they just feel so cheap and chintzy and it's not ergonomically comfortable to cover these. Whether you're covering two or four, it just doesn't feel that great. I wish I could articulate or, or verbalize what makes them feel not great, but this is such a unique and interesting design. You really do have to hold one of these to be like, I can't put my finger on it or in it, but man, just doesn't feel good. You know what I mean? Natural gamer factor. You're like, hmm, doesn't feel good to me. And then this bad boy over here, I mean, they're they're cheap, they're wiggly. They feel like a cheap add-on. The Power A Fusion Pro 2 has many issues besides the paddles, but the paddles just bring it all together as a little cherry on top of the cream pie cake here. Yeah, I, I personally wouldn't recommend this controller to like anybody, even in the budget factor, because there's actually cheaper controllers, some generic, 50 and $60 ones on Amazon that actually feel and perform better than the Power Fusion Pro here. So this is the order here from best to worst in my personal opinion after spending hundreds of hours behind the sticks of these controllers. But I wanna hear your opinion. Drop it down there in the comment section below. We'll get a little forum, a little conversation going on. If you enjoyed this comparison, liking the video will help it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry as well as tutorials, helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing and honest gaming peripheral reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, chairs, mics, etc. And I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.